Well, welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome, everyone. How habits develop, how habits develop. Let's talk about how habits develop today. Wow, so glad to see all of you. I pray you're having a great, great day. First day of spring, yay! Oh my God, let's just do a hand clap for the first day of spring. Oh gosh, we got sunshine today. Yes, we do. <laughs> it's a beautiful day, and I'm so glad about it. Oh my God, yes, we still have snow out there, guys. <laughs> it's not all melted, but the calendar says it's the first day of spring, so <laughs> we're going to accept it. Listen. You know, my desire is to encourage, to add value to your life. That's what I'm all about. And so we've been, we've been in a book review, some of you remember from before, on wisdom, on wisdom. So today we're going to pick back up on a portion of that on how habits develop, how habits develop. And we're going to find out man what what goes on with these habits right so let's let's just have a a, a base scripture is from Hosea 4 6 and it says my people are destroyed due to a lack of knowledge due to a lack of knowledge let's have a prayer father God we pray today that we no longer have a lack of knowledge but that we will search and research and find what it is that can cause us to be a success in everything that we do. We know that you desire for us to be the head and not the tail. Help us, Lord, to latch on to these key values, to these wisdom keys that we can move forward each and every day of our lives and pass it down to our children and to our, just a legacy, let's just leave a legacy on how we made wise decisions in you. We thank you in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Let's do this, let's do this. Okay, so most people develop habits, both positive and negative, through a rather unconscious process. That process follows what Shad Hemsetter outlines in his classic book. He says, what to say when you talk to yourself. Now we know we've had people say, don't talk to yourself. Well, I talk to myself. It's what you say to yourself that makes a difference, okay? Because you're gonna find out that wealthy people, they talk to themselves. They be telling themselves, you got this. They be telling themselves, you can work this out. You can make this happen. Listen, anybody ever talk to themselves uh, ever when they were a child and you were trying to learn a speech, you were trying to learn some some lesson that you needed to maybe recite and you would take that thing and you'd walk about and you'd say it loud, you'd talk it out loud over and over and over and then and then when you think you get it real good, then you'll take it to your mom or somebody and say, here, hold the paper. Now let me see if I can say it. You see? So you are talking out loud. You are saying it over and over to yourself. So we, faith comes by hearing, and we were hearing it, and it was, it was getting written like on our minds. Yeah, on our subconscious. It really does matter. Okay, so he says here, in logical progression, what we believe determines our attitude. What we believe determines our attitudes, affects our feelings, directs our behavior, and determines our success or failure. Wow. So he goes, he's going to list five, and then we're going to go through them, but we won't make all five today, I'm sure. But we're going to start, okay? So he, number one is programming creates beliefs. Beliefs create attitudes. Attitudes create feelings. Feelings determine actions and actions create results. Wow. Wow. So now so now let's go through our programming sets up our beliefs. So he said it all begins with how we think about ourselves and about life. With how our mind has been programmed to think. 
Wow. Almost our minds, we've been programmed to think, guys. It says, what we have accepted from the outside world or fed to ourselves has initiated a natural cause and effect reaction sequence that leads up leads us either to successful self-management or to unsuccessful mismanagement of ourselves our resources and our future oh my lord oh do I have a story it is our programming that sets up our beliefs and the chain reaction begins it's our programming that sets up our beliefs and the chain reaction begins. It says, while we are all, I'm sorry, while we all react in different ways to people and circumstances in our lives, these influences can have a major effect on the philosophies and the ideologies we accept. Therefore, the habits we form in life. Our beliefs may be programmed by any or all of these things. We gotta listen to them. You know something? I was just talking to a family member last night. Oh my God. Oh my God. Wow, what goes on in our minds? As a child, I saw my, my family member squabble over property that my grandfather had had struggled and had, oh my God, he cut the trees with his own bare hands and cleared that property for his, he thought his children and his great grandkids and all would value that property. But something was there through the family, through the beliefs, through the struggles and through the jealousies and the squabbles or somehow the kids didn't see the value in that property. Oh my goodness, can you imagine? And guess what happened? You already know where there should have been a lot of wealth in the family and the property should have been passed down. It's not there. It ended up getting in the hands of someone else. Oh my, programming, programming. It starts early, people. Let's go, let's go. Okay, it says here, the people around us who are models and examples for us, particularly while we are growing up. I just said that. For instance, if a child is raised in a household where the mother or father has a bad temper, they are often programmed to react with anger whenever they are frustrated, scared, or confused. Wow. I bet you didn't know that. Did, did anybody know that? Did you know that? Did you, you know, we are models. We are role models. We don't want to be if you might not want to be, but you are. Yes, you are. To the parents, to the children that are around you, they don't even have to be your kids, but the ones that are in your household. We, like I said, I grew up around, there was, I didn't understand it as a child, but there was, there was some bickerings that was going on amongst the siblings, adult siblings, and they were squabbling over property and, and over, oh my God. Can you see that? Wow. Well, when you're in it as a child, sometimes you don't know what's happening. You don't know why Uncle So-and-so is upset with Aunt So-and-so. And you don't know why, why uh, this person is, is this person and carrying on with that person. They just seem to never get along. What seems to be the problem? <clears throat> what is going on? And, and, and there it is. There's a bad temper. There's some squabbling. There's gonna, so now we as children, we're seeing this. We're seeing this. And so, thank God, in my life, my temper was changed, thank God, because I had grabbed hold to a lot of that. I did. If things didn't go the way I thought they should go, before I knew it, I was like maybe running up to 100. You know, I'm upset. I'm thinking the more I yell, the more things will get done or, or whatever. It was crazy. And I didn't know where all that stuff came from. It says here, I got to read this one again, y'all. It says, the people around us who are models and examples for us, particularly while we are growing up, particularly while we are growing up. 
guys, it matters. Let's look at our children today. We gotta, oh my God, this is huge. This is huge. They're, they're watching us, they're seeing us, and they're grabbing habits and formulating our personalities and, and things from us. Oh wow, let's go to the next one. We're, we're talking about now, programming creates beliefs, okay? That's one we're on. So here's another point in there. The words that are spoken to us, oh my word, oh my word. Guys, you know I told you every time you come on here, the ones of you that know me, I told you I was verbally abused. As a child, I was verbally abused. I told you the only way I was, I ended up not being on the, the doctor's couch was, was God used my mom to counteract all of that negativity. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. But these were words that were spoken. Powerful words. Let's look. Let's look. It says, the words that are spoken to us, particularly repetitiously. See, repetition is the mother of all skill. Repetition is the mother of all skill. No matter what you're doing, if you continuously repeat it and repeat it and repeat it, you're going to get better at it. It can be a bad habit for you. It can be a good habit for you. It can be whatever it is. But if you continuously repeat it, you're going to get better and better at it. Okay. We might form habits based on ideas about ourselves that are continuously reinforced by the words of a person of influence in our life, whether those words are, you have great potential or you are nobody. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay? Because those words are being spoken to you and they help formulate your personality. Oh my gosh. Can you see how powerful this is? Can anybody see how powerful this is? It says here, there's another point. The ways in which people treat you. The ways in which people treat you. Oh my goodness. I'm, I got to go over to my YouTube channel and do a live over there. I got to put this on because this is so huge right here. The ways in which people treat you. We might develop positive or negative habits based on whether we are treated with respect or disdain or apathy. People said, have you heard this saying? What is it? I don't care. I don't care how much you know till I know how much you care. People will remember how you make them feel. People will remember how you make them feel. People will remember how you make them feel. Yes. It says here, the ways, the ways in which people treat you. How do people treat you? Or better still, how do you treat people? People will remember how you make them feel. They, they, you can have money or not have money. You can be, oh my God, all kinds of degrees behind your name. But people will remember how you make them feel. Oh my goodness, we're talking about programming creates beliefs. The ways in which people treat you. It says we might develop positive or negative habits based on whether we are treated with respect. If somebody respects you, you'll want to respect them back. Or whether they, if they dis disdain you, if they diss you. That's a short word, if they diss you. You feel, you feel rotten, man. You feel like, like, Wow, they just stepped on me. Like, what am I? Some people say, what am I, chopped liver? It's like you just, boom, you know, or, or apathy, you know, just what? Oh my goodness. This programming creates beliefs. It's, all this stuff is formulating beliefs in us. It's formulating beliefs in, in, in us as a child. It's formulating beliefs in your children. It's formulating beliefs in whether you're a teacher in school or, 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 or you run a nursery or, or whatever you do. The, oh my God, it's formulating beliefs. It's formulating beliefs, people. And then we wonder why. Why the kids are acting this way. Or, or why when they get older, they... What's wrong with him? He act like he's this or she act like she's that or whatever. But something happened. 
There were some beliefs formulated somewhere. Wow. Let's move in another point. It says, the expectations for, of our culture to act or look a specific way or to value certain things. Let's give an example. We might accept an underlying culture idea that style, oh, oh my gosh, this is too good to be true. That style is more important than substance for getting ahead in life. Oh my people. And therefore develop habits that reinforce outlook. So now we're focusing more on what we wear. We're focusing more on, on how we, that, 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 uh, there was a song years ago about um, keeping up with the Joneses. There was a song of something, a movie, I don't know what it was, about keeping up with the Joneses. And, and we gotta feel that I gotta have the best and the most expensive car. I gotta have the best in the, in the most expensive suit, outfit. I got to spend lots of money. Oh my God, girl, I can't go out unless I'm wearing a $500 outfit. I gotta have on 200 for my dress and 100 for my shoes and my purse and my this and my that. And I gotta be, I gotta be on it. And yet, here you are, you're only making minimum wage. Or uh, here you are, you, you can't even pay hardly your rent or, or uh, you don't own a house because you, you haven't saved up any money to buy a house so you don't own any property and, and, and but you're trying to keep up with the fad we're trying to keep up with the looks we're trying to oh my gosh am I saying we shouldn't look good no am I saying we shouldn't no no but I tell you this as we if you, if you would take a look sometime at the most wealthiest people that you see, they don't always have, they don't always have. I'm not talking about the rappers. I'm talking about a different culture now. I'm not talking about uh, rappers and, and, and people that are um, your fame in Hollywood and doing all of this stuff. That's their life. That is a glamour. That's what we do. We are, listen, if you're trying to keep up with them, you go ahead because they're making money off of you and they're taking the money they make off of you, and then they're doing all those things. You know, we're the ones that's paying for their movies. We're the ones that's watching their shows. We're the ones that's doing all the stuff. We're making them rich. So if we think now that we can take our little mini any whatever, after we paid all that money to go, you know, to see their concerts and do all that stuff, now we're going to live the lifestyle they live, and we're going to wear the clothes that live. We are hoodwinking. We're, we're, we're really uh, deceiving ourselves. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So let's not even go there. But when you start looking at wealthy people and, and running your, 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 your area, you start watching. They don't always wear the fanciest of clothes. Sometimes they can have on jeans, sneakers, and whatever. And you would never know that that man was a multimillionaire. Or you would never know that that lady was a You wouldn't know it because of the way that they carry themselves. So it looks like sometimes the less we have, the more we try to showboat. Wow, 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 that's deep. It looks like sometimes the less we have, the more we try to showboat because it's like saying this is what I want to be. This is where I want to get. But we got to have some wisdom in getting there. And guys, at my age right now, I'm just not learning this stuff. Because I didn't have this knowledge before. I didn't have it. I wasn't ready to receive it. Let me say it like that. There were people telling us things. There were people trying to tell. They were trying to tell us. They were speaking things. We were seeing things. But I wasn't ready to receive it. Because I had a vision in my mind, I'm going to do it a whole different way. There was a man and his family in my neighborhood. I won't call his name because people that to this video will know him. He could not read or write. I think he finally, he finally learned maybe how to sign his name. When he would get applications for a job, he would have to bring the application home so his wife could fill it out because he could not read or write. 
but he had wisdom. He knew what to do, when to do, and how to do it. And he landed himself good jobs. And he created his own business. He was, he was entrepreneur-minded. And, and, and he would, he would, he, he would, I tell you what was funny to, to the community, because they didn't understand his wisdom. They didn't understand what he, where he was coming from. He bought property, and then he put a trailer on it, a mobile home, and then he put it up front, and then he saved his money. And then behind his mobile home, he started to lay a foundation for this gigantic, elaborate house that he was building for his family. And people were like wondering, what is this guy doing? And he would build a little and live in his mobile home and he'd work and he'd build a little until after he was done, God bless you, Antoine, after he was done, he had this huge, beautiful four car garage or something house that he had built for his family and he was able to remove the mobile home out in, from in front of it with this huge big yard and then he ended up having next door a rental property but he couldn't read or write all he had was wisdom he wasn't the best dresser he was clean his children always were clean they never liked anything. They had all the bicycles. They had all the things that they loved. His wife was not neatly dressed. God bless you. So much was going on. But he used wisdom. So it says here again, he was not trying to, to create a style and say, look, I got, look what I'm wearing, guys. Look what I'm doing. All the stuff is material. It's vain. But he, he, the home that he built, his children are living in it today, and his grandchildren will be living in that home. Do you see what we're sharing here today? Can anybody see this? God bless you. You're welcome, Antoine. Can you see the wisdom here? It says here, we might accept an underlying cultural idea. So it's the African American culture, Mary. Maybe to like like let's let's dress, let's showboat, let's. You know, let's wear the best, let's spin, let's spin, let's spin. Let's spin it on, on a good time. No, let's invest it somewhere, guys. Let's invest it somewhere, guys. Where are you when the bank shut down? What was your thought? What was your thought on your 401k? I know what I was thinking on my 401k because I'm still working. What, what were you thinking on your 401k? What were you thinking about? Whoa, is it my bank? What were you thinking, well, is it my bank going to shut? What's going on with my bank? You know, I, I see these people are here. Wow, did you have $200,000 in the bank? No, I didn't, I wish I had. Yeah, you know, you see what I'm saying now? So we gotta make a change here. He's saying programming creates beliefs. How have we been programmed? How have we been programmed? Look, we gotta renew our minds. We gotta renew our minds. You remember I said I was programmed from the family, the siblings were bickering back and forth over property, over my grandfather's property, and now no one has the property. <laughs> you see? They, because, because they didn't see the value in it that he had. And they were bickering back and forth with each other, and the, one, the property that is left is still only a minimal amount. We got, to, we got to renew our minds. We got to change. We got to change the way we think. It's time out for this, guys. It says here, let's move on. We're talking about how programming creates beliefs, okay? Now it says the messages of the media we absorb. Oh, the media, it affects our mind, y'all watch. Yes, it does, Antoine, y'all watch. It says the message of the media we absorb, such as TV, radio, social media, books, or magazines, okay? It says if we see that everyone on social media is doing a particular activity or thinking a certain way, we might make a habit of doing the same thing. Did you get that? Did anybody get that? I mean, my God. It, did you get it? I'll say it again. Mm. Mm. The message of the message of the media we absorb, it says here, such as TV, what says it, the older you get, the smarter you get. God bless you, my brother. It is so. And hopefully we can we can transfer it back, amen. 
Hopefully we can pass it down. Hopefully we can use it, get ourselves out of a jam, and then hopefully we can pass it on as a legacy. You said that correctly. It says here, okay, so we what it's saying here is that we have a tendency to follow suit. My grandfather used to say, um, if someone asked you to jump off a bridge, would you do it? Well, nowadays, people probably would. <laughs> the, the, the world, the change, yes. The, people probably would jump off of a bridge now. You see what I'm trying to say? But I won't. So if somebody tells you go jump off a bridge, you don't go do that. So you don't just follow blindly to do what everybody else is doing. This is what he's saying here. This is the moral behind this. We got to have our own mind. We got to know how to think for ourselves. We need to create um, our own, own values, our own beliefs. We need to, to read like I'm doing here. We need to research. We, the best place you can get principles from on how to live, believe it or not, it's really the Bible. I want to shock somebody right now. All of your great entrepreneurs, all of your great people that you see, you see those keys of wisdom that they be using? They get them from the Bible. They just don't tell you. They don't give the credit to the Bible, but that's where they're getting their wisdom from. The investment principles, it's all in the Bible. The talent of the, of, uh, of, uh, of the 10 talents, where Jesus gave somebody one talent and they buried it, and it didn't, it didn't, it didn't uh, multiply, and then he gave somebody, what, two, three, or four, and they took those talents, they, they went and invested it somehow, and it multiplied and made more for them. In other words, they learned that principle from the Bible. What he was saying here, uh, 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 let's go back to the banks, let's go back to the banks, okay? So now, the money that we have sitting in our checking accounts, it's just sitting there, okay? And it's accumulating some little whatever, all right? It's just sitting there, but it's not multiplying. Do you know the only way I can multiply the money in my checking account, okay, is I have to put more money in there. <laughs> I don't know if I'm making any sense here. <laughs> God bless us all with talent. You have to find it. Yes, yes, yes. It is so. It is so. And that's what I, that we all have a purpose, Antoine. We all have a purpose. And we do have to find it. And one of the ways, if you go back and check my old videos, we've already talked about that. Uh, in here, I'll let you see the book that we were doing. And on, okay, it's called this book here. So Antoine, if you can get that, it's called The Power Principles, uh, The Benefits of a Wisdom Driven Life. And it's by Dale C. Broner, B-R-O-N-N-E-R, -N -N -E and you can get that on Amazon or on your Kindle or whatever. So we, we went over those, those, we did an extensive teaching on that because uh, you, everybody born, you're, every person that is born on this earth, God has placed a purpose in you. You have a purpose for being here on the earth. That is so true. And we have to find it. But what we're talking about today is how habits develop. How habits develop, okay? And we are saying that there were five ways. And so we went through, we're going, finishing up number one, where it says, God blesses us all. That's why he woke us up. A lot of people did not wake up. That is true, very true. Okay, amen. And thank God that I woke up and thank God you did too, amen. So let's go on now. So our five, five points here, because I want to stay on target. Program increase beliefs. Beliefs create attitudes. Attitudes create feelings. Feelings demonstrate actions. Actions creates results. So we're at number one, talking about being programmed from a child, okay? We were programmed from a child. Yes, we were. From the people that were around us, be it our teachers, be it our parents, be it our, 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 no matter who, those that were around us, we were gaining something from them as we were growing up. The words that were spoken to us, okay? And especially that we heard over and over and over, they were helping to program us. The ways that people treat us when we were growing up and the way we do now, they're programming us. That, that's what happens, you see. If you were a child like me and you were verbally abused, that those things, those words, they, they program you. If, if you were shunned or uh, kind of made to feel that you were, you were not good enough, if people didn't respect you, all of those kinds of things, they was programming you, programming you. 
And then some people, let me back up, back up here to this one I'm on right now. The ways where people treat you, because that is a big one right there. I think we're going to, we might talk about that Wednesday night at Bible study. I don't know. But it says here, look, the ways people treat you, if someone says good morning to you, that's good. If they don't, if they smile at you, or if every time you see people, they frown at you. You see people, they cross on the other side of the street. You see people, they turn their backs when you come. You see people do, all of that make you feel some kind of a way. You see what I'm trying to say? Oh, uh, yes. Turn on here. It says they can't you. You have to program yourself. That that is true in a manner of speaking. But what the author is saying here is this: When I say program, okay, let's go back to create beliefs. Our beliefs are created. Okay. So in other words, when you are born, um, when you are born into the world, you don't have beliefs. You don't you don't have beliefs. When you're born, you have a blank page. There's not anything that is on your mind. I truly believe that uh, from being in nursing, from being uh, uh, just in studies, the, the baby is with a blank mind. I truly believe that. Okay, now, now, there's a saying that the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. So it starts out with the very people that you're exposed to who you're exposed to, who are around you. You understand what I'm trying to say? My first was my mom, I believe. That's what she told me. I don't know, and you know, I was a baby, but she was my first. So my beliefs and all come, started out from her. And then later, uh, from the, the, the other siblings around me. And then later, oh, whoever, you know what I'm saying? And she was taking me to church and in the community and this type of a thing. But it started with my mother, from what I can believe. You see, so, so what I'm saying is, is this, you can program yourself, but you start out somewhere and you got to work with that. So that's what we're talking about here today. That's where I'm, I'm hanging out. Okay. So it says here, the ways people treat you affect you. You can say it with yourself. No, it doesn't. I'm a machine. I'm a robot. It doesn't. It's a lie. The ways in which people treat you affect you. If people are kind to you, it affects you. If people are, 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 are evil against you, it affects you. Now that's real. So let's just face reality and be real. Okay. So it says here, and I'm not fussing at anybody, I just get excited, guys. Uh, not me if you weak minded. Yeah, I got you. Okay. Amen. So it says here, the, let's move to another point under, under programming creates beliefs. The expectations of our culture, we talked about that. So it's what's expected. So it's like, um, and I know this for a fact, I know we go through what we call fads. One minute, and some of y'all might be too young for this, but back in the day, there was bell bottoms. Back in the day, there was, you know, real big afros. Back in the day, there was, you know, this, there was, there was different things that we would wear. You see what I'm trying to say? Uh, according to the culture. So you designer jeans or you would do this or you would do that. Just like the day the guys with the pants hanging, all kinds of things. Yeah, in the culture, you do things, okay? That's that that's that's how things happen, all right? It it formulates in you. They still have yeah, some okay. Um so let's move on. It says here the next point. The messages of the media, so we talked about how what we watch on TV, what we listen to, you listen to me, whether what you read, all of that affects. Yes, it does. Now, how we absorb, let's talk about that. How we absorb, assimilate, and apply the sum total of our learning and experiences in life. How we absorb, okay. So remember what I said, repetition is the mother of all skill. How can you say that, okay? Teaching piano, you repeat it over and over and over till you get it. Playing my guitar, I practice it over and over and over till I get it. Again, in learning a recital, a speech, or something that I'm going to do, you do it over and over and over till you get it. I work in medicine, and as I'm uh, training to um, do a procedure, 
with a particular patient. I, I don't just come in one day off the street or somewhere and I just walk up to that patient and do that procedure. No, no. I have to be trained and I do it over and over until the person that is training me feel confident that I'm able now to go and do that procedure on that particular patient. See? Yes, I'm going to respect that. Yes, yes. Welcome, Lisa. Welcome. You see what I'm saying? Welcome, everyone. I hope I didn't miss anyone. God bless you and welcome. Thank you for coming. We're talking about um, programming creates beliefs. So in how repetition is the mother of all skill, it affects us. So what we do over and over and over, our overall topic today is how habits develop. That's the whole bottom line. It's how we develop habits, okay? That's what we're really into. And the ways that we develop habits, we talked about one of the ways is programming creates beliefs, okay? That's one of the ways. All right, so now we have to absorb stuff in. So I have to I have to work over and over, getting that procedure under my belt. And now I, I practiced it sometimes. I can remember doing it at work. They give us like 12 weeks to learn, you know, a procedure. See? So it's about, pro you, you got you to gotta repeat. You, it's repetition. I don't want nobody. I don't want no doctor or anybody. You haven't practiced your procedure. You haven't done it over and over. When you're going to come and do it on me, that's what happened to black people. We were guinea pigs. You don't want to do that. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah, it's, 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 you got to work at it. You got to work at it. And you want to make sure you practice it correctly. You see what I'm saying? All right? Now, it says here, we might have been programmed in such a way that we mismanage just one area of our lives. Several areas or most areas, okay? That is why a person might be successful in their vocation, but not in their relationships or vice versa. Now that's huge, okay? So again, programming comes from when we're kids, we're growing up, it's around the family, it's, it's, it's around, I keep saying this over and over because there's new people coming in, and this is important, and I want you to understand this. When I'm saying programming, I'm not saying that we're a machine, we're a computer, but I'm saying that we do learn, okay? Yes, you have students work in the hospital. They do, but they're learning under under instruction. When I worked in the hospital, Antoine, they didn't just let me in as a student and, and left me go. I had an instructor over me, darling. But good point. God bless you. Okay, so here. Um, get back to my train of thought, if I can. I love Antoine. I love his input. Okay, let's see here now. What were we saying? All right, so we said, we said we can be good in one area and we can not be, be not so good in the other area. And that is true. So it all depends on our programming. We're not talking about we're a machine. We're talking about human beings. We're talking about what we learn in life as we are growing up from childhood on. Okay? It says here, there are people that are good at managing money maybe. But when it comes to managing their home or managing their relationship between husband and wife or managing the relationship with their kids, they're just not good at it. And now you can deny that if you want to, but I know it's real. You can deny it if you want to, but I know it's real. I know that we're all good in different areas. That's why, um, for example, with my husband and myself, we had to figure out who was better at doing what. Why? Because of the way that we were programmed. You see what I'm trying to say? What I mean program is kids. He was raised uh, as being the oldest and I was raised as the youngest. My way of thinking, my way of thinking was totally different than his way of thinking. So we had to figure out who, how we manage things, okay? Who was good at numbers, all right? Who was good at this? He was an excellent mechanic. He was good at all kinds of things. Well, we find these things out and then we put them together to cause us to do what? To be, to, to be successful. Yes, to be successful. Yes, exactly. Good point, good point. Okay, now, in what ways have these various elements influenced your own life habits? Okay, okay. We respond to life based on what we think. We respond to life based on what we think. Now, somebody might disagree. That's you. But I'm telling you, that's real. We think it, then we do it. We think it, 
then we do it. We think it, then we do it. He said, because you were raised around bad, that don't mean that you do bad. So, exactly, Antoine, I don't think you'll get my point. Exactly, Antoine. He's not saying that you, you again, oh, how can I help you follow me what I'm saying, Antoine? How can I help you? He's not saying, because good comes, good can come out of anywhere. It can be changed. What you're doing then, the Bible calls it renewing your mind. The Bible calls it renewing your mind. So yes, you, you could have come from a very poverty stricken area, so did I. You could come from a place where they're swearing around you every day, so did I. You could come from a place where, again, I was verbally abused, negative, told I was this, told us that, whatever, come right out of that. But because of, I oh, thank God, that I did have some positivity in my life. I had my mother there to counteract it. I had some school teachers there to counteract it. Yes, we were uh, poor in the eyes of people with finances, but we had love as far as my mother was concerned and others that will put it in us and it helped us to create who we are. So nobody is saying in this talk that I'm doing today on this study where it says how habits develop, no one is saying that, in a, that, that you have to always be the same. No one is saying that because you come from a broken home, you can, or you're going to always be in a broken home. No one is saying that in this lesson today. What we're saying is things from the outside can affect us. And what we in turn have to do then is realize that to formulate our habits. Now we're only on point number one. We haven't even gone to point number two where beliefs create attitudes. We haven't even gone there yet. But we're just trying to help. And I want Antoine to understand this because I'm loving his input. And he's thinking that I'm saying, I believe, that if you are come from a broken home or you come from somewhere, you're going to always be there. That is not true. And that is not what I'm saying, Antoine, at all. What we're talking about today is developing habits, how they develop, how they develop. And then we're going to, as we go on in the lesson, figure out what we can do. We're talking about what affects us how things affect us, and we in turn have to guard our mind. That's why I read the scriptures, Antoine. We read in the scriptures what God tell us to guard our minds and guard our eyes, guard our thinking. It, 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 not everybody now is a Christian, Antoine. Not everybody knows the principles of the scripture, but the ones that do, the ones that do, are the ones that are around a, 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 a godly influence. It helps you come through it. It helps you. You see what I'm saying? So, yes, you formulate a wall that you can reject. And that's good. But not everybody can formulate that wall that they can reject. Some have to be taught. Some have to be shown. You, you see what I'm saying? And so you, Antoine, with your wisdom, you can, you can guide other youth under you. See? You can guide other children. You can the Boys and Girls Club. You see what I'm saying? Or just in your own neighborhood, in your, but you can be with them. You can let them know that, honey, you see what I'm trying to say? Regardless of where you came from, you can make it. Look at me. But you said it earlier, Antoine, that the older we get, the more we understand, the more wisdom we get. And that's the way God created us. As a child, we don't know it all. But we have to learn. And these things all around us influence us. And now we can have bad influences and we can have good influences. See, it's not about where you were born. We have no, no control over that. See, we have no control over that. Um, my, I was born in a family, the last one. My mother thought, I think that she weren't gonna have any more kids. I don't know what happened, but I came along. But I was not welcome among the family, you see because they didn't like the setup. They didn't like who my parents, they didn't like what was going on. So it came into negativity, but as I grew, you see what I'm trying to say? And even though these words would come against me from family members and friends and all of the ones that's speaking uh, behind you know, the child's back, children are hearing, I'm a child, I'm hearing these conversations as I grow, I'm asking questions, I'm internalizing, you know, who's my father, you know, what's going on, these kinds of things. You see what I'm saying? But then, as time went on, and people kept encouraging, you're going to be a blessing one day, you keep going, kept formulating those attitudes. You see what I'm trying to say? Yeah, 
into me, positive attitudes, combating the negative, formulating the positive. And what it did, it helped me. Now, I didn't learn it all overnight, Antoine. I'm not, I didn't get where I am here today. It took a lot. It took a lot. A lot of mistakes I've made, a lot of bad choices I've made, but God has kept me through it all to help me to realize which influences to look to, who, who to surround myself with, what five, am, who to put in my circle, Antoine, who? Because one time I was going down the wrong road, Antoine. I was going down the wrong path. I'm trying to tell you I was going down the wrong path, Antoine. But thank God for his grace and mercy. Yes, yes, yes. And, and, and I'm loving you today. Thank God for his grace and mercy. So I want to get back to the lesson just a hair now. Okay, because, um, oh yeah, okay, I'm going to do 10, let's do 10 more minutes. Let's go to 3.30, and we're going to we're gonna have to close it, Antoine. Antoine, let's go to 3, that'll be about 15 more minutes. Let's go. Okay, so now here we go. Trying to finish your point number one. So it says, what we think, what, what a person thinks about events, can be far more important than the event themselves, okay? That's how a lie can become assumed truth to a person, okay? Okay, it says here, the way we see the problem is the problem. We gotta see it in the perspective. He said thus, you have to be careful what beliefs you formulate and accept. Now, I don't, I don't know if you'll get this, but it says here, I believe you will. It says here, be careful what beliefs you formulate and accept, recognizing how they affect your actions, including your daily habits. Because when you think, because what you think about, you will bring about. Now tell me what you think about that, Emma. Tell me what you think about that, Antoine. What you think about, you will bring about. We live out of our thoughts. We live out of our thoughts. So I'll sit here now and I'll think and I'll say, you know, I gotta go and do such and such. I'll think about it and then I'll get up and I'll go and do it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, we live out of our thoughts. Our thoughts matter. So we have to we have to guard what we think about. We have to guard what we let come in to bring into that. Let me read this. All the hate be in your own hood. All the hate be in your own hood. Okay, so now we're not going to go there dealing with hate and those type of things, okay? So I see right now, I see what you're about. So we're not, we're not, that's not where we are. So we're not doing that. Okay, so it says here, um, thus, you have to be careful. I don't have my moderator on today, but we're not gonna deal with that. And so guys, whoever see that comment, just totally uh, ignore that one. Uh, okay, let's get this out of here. We'll get that out of here. We're not going to have that go on in here. Okay. All right, guys. So we're, we're not dealing with any type of hate, any type of things that are blaming anyone about anything. We're not, we're not dealing with that. Okay. All right. We're talking about how we are creating, um, how habits develop. And we're, we're working on programming, creating beliefs, and we're going from there. Okay? All right. So, we're saying what you think about is what you bring about. All right? So, we want to have good thoughts in our minds. Okay? And the way we get good thoughts is we find good things to think about. Yeah. Well, we can create that from good books, being around good people. You know, your, your, uh, 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 yeah. I'm not trying to start anything, but I'm trying to let people know don't trust everyone. Okay, 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 okay. I can receive that, Antoine. Thank you. Because I, I really, I didn't know where you were coming from with that, and I, I wasn't sure. But thank you for making that plain. I'm sorry, then. I'm sorry I <laughs> jumped the gun. But I didn't want this broadcast to go that way, because that's not what I'm about. Okay? All right. They want to hear you, but they want to hear the truth. Truth is good. That's okay. Truth is good. All right. Well, let's not go off into something. All right. Now, so let's 
so so now we are oh yep okay we're almost there it says here let's review this and we're, we're we will not start a new one the next one is beliefs create attitudes that's the second point in how habits develop so as we review them on on the first one and this whole book is on wisdom okay so we're saying again most people develop habits both positive and negative through a rather unconscious process that process follows okay uh, for example uh, what you say to yourself okay when you talk to yourself we talked about that at the beginning remember and we said what we believe determines our attitudes okay it affects our feelings it directs our behavior and it determines our success or failure okay so again as a review what we believe determines our attitudes affect our feelings direct our behavior and determines our success or failure I would want everyone to do good and going to live one day how many people want to hear the truth amen all you we don't want to hear lies so Antoine we're not focusing on lies and here people we're focusing on the truth <laughs> okay so when you come to me go live joining when you come to me go live joining okay right now we're going to end this but maybe we can do that as long as we keep it civil and I'm not a debater I don't debate <laughs> I discuss <laughs> but I'm not a debater so I would love to do that one day okay yeah <laughs> all right all right okay so we're gonna get ready to end this now thank you for being kind and thank you <laughs> for making it plain because I thought to myself oh my god what in the world have I got myself into? All I'm sharing about is, is uh, wisdom and, and, and uh, how, to how habits develop and how we can move forward and, and be a success. And I'm going like, what is Antoine doing to me? But thank you, Antoine. I appreciate it. <laughs> you, you made my day. You, <laughs> you made me feel so much better. Thank you so much. I wish you, would you hit the like button for me? So that I could get 100 likes before I get out of here. <laughs> that would be great now that you you blessed my spirit and made me feel so better somebody just hit the like button please <laughs> oh my god somebody just hit that like button for me before we go all right now uh in closing review tell you what we talked about and tell you why okay so this made me feel good you know how to do it hit the like button on there i appreciate it all right so it says here it all begins of how we think about ourselves. How do you think about yourself? Antoine, how do you think about yourself? How do you think? Okay, what do you think about you? You know, um, I think, let's, let's just start with that. How do, you, how, do you, how do you feel about yourself, Antoine? You feel blessed? I do too. I do too. You know, um, Antoine, I feel blessed now. I've always felt, um, how can I say this? How can I say this? Um, okay, okay, I'll say it like this. I haven't always, I've always felt blessed. I've always felt thankful. Thank you, they're coming and I appreciate it. But I haven't always felt good about myself. Remember I told you that as a child I was, I was abused, right? I didn't feel good, Antoine. Now listen to me, just take it easy, okay? I'm gonna share share my heart with you. I'm laying it out here, Antoine. So don't 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 crush it, okay? I'm trusting you now. Okay? So I I didn't <laughs> thank you. I, I I didn't feel um always good about myself because I was told that I didn't look good enough. I was told that um, by my other siblings, you know what I mean, I was kind of not accepted, you know what I mean, you're the, I'm not, not going to use the words on here, but you're the this one, you're the that one, you're the blah, 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 blah. Uh, my features didn't look like theirs, they had beautiful hair, my hair didn't look like theirs. Um, I just felt like I was 
you ever seen what you ever heard the expression of black sheep of the family or the ugly duckling or the 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 Cinderella story, you know, the something, you know, that that type of a thing. That's kind of like where I was uh, starting my childhood out. It was not good for me, Antoine. It was not good. But I thank God that my mother loved me enough, even though she was, um, uh, what's the word I want to use for her? Um, yeah, shunned. Even though she was kind of like shunned, you know, um, uh, not embraced, not embraced maybe by the um, the community or the, the 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 family because she had had another child that they didn't think that she should have had in whatever the case may be. Uh, so it started out kind of rough, Antoine. And um, so I didn't always feel the better of myself. So I tried to make myself um, be where people would like me. I went to um, try to act right, talk right, uh, do all the things that I knew to do, but no matter what I did, it just didn't seem to help. And then um, uh, I was I was later abused as far as um, nobody hitting me. When I say abused, I want everybody to know nobody was hitting me. The only person who hit me was my mom with her switch around my legs. I got good switchings around my legs when I would get into something, okay? But as far as somebody, you know, physically beating me, that wasn't it. Words have power. The, um, there's a... Um, Proverbs 18, I think it's 18 and 21. Do you know this one? 18, I got seven minutes. I promise you guys I was going to be done at 3.30. Proverbs 18 and 21, I think it says here. It says, death and life is in the power of the tongue. You see what I'm saying? So the tongue is so powerful until when words are spoken, and I know people say today, I don't care what anybody say to me, and they can't hurt me, and did it, did it, did it, did it. Yeah, you can say that if you want to. But it says right there in the Bible, right there, it says death and life is in the power of the tongue. And so words can, words hurt. Words can destroy. Now you can build up a wall. And that's what I had to do as I was growing up as a teen. I had to build up a wall.